Greetings, this is Captain Henson, and today we will be discussing Star Wars The Bad Batch, Episode 12, Rescue on Ryloth. With me today is... Jedi Knight Luke, here once again. Alright, so, let us talk about the major points of the episode. Uh, but just a quick one or two sentence summary as to what the episode's about. It follows on directly from the previous episode with Hera's parents having been captured, and Hera contacts the Bad Batch in this urgent moment because she needs their help. So the first talking point I imagine would be the transmission itself. Yes, no surprise here. As I figured, Hera calls upon the Bad Batch to help. I don't know if it's just my mind playing tricks on me or whatever, but I do get the feeling that this was kind of meant as an A New Hope reference. Wouldn't surprise me. It's like poetry. It rhymes. Indeed. Yeah, but still, um, so yeah, the last episode was essentially just set up for the Wyloth stuff, which is why the Bad Batch only had that one cameo. So, they are back to being the main characters again. And uh, her uh, contacting the Bad Batch comes at a point where the Bad Batch are on the ship, just cruising through space, and Omega is in the midst of trying to repair a gonk droid. But then the hologram transmission gets through, and uh, Hunter is initially a bit puzzled as to why Omega gave Hera the Bad Batch's com frequency. And I will say this, we get to see more of Hera and Omega's friendship in this episode, and it's fun. And it contrasts rather interestingly with how Tech specifically treats Omega in the first few minutes of the episode, mm. because just after watching the holographic transmission from Hera, Tech just says she may be overstating the situation. Children tend to exaggerate things, which, with Omega being Omega... She just outright says to him, no, we don't. And on the one hand, I guess that is kind of the provoked response you would typically expect from a child. Well, at least a child of Omega's age when an adult says something like that. But on the other hand, would Hera really lie about the situation that her homeworld is in for the sake of it? Well, keep in mind, they don't know Hera. Besides that, like, one time. And even then, they didn't interact with her, just Omega. Uh, I guess. And Hunter is initially extremely against it, even before they land on Ryloth. Uh, <laughs> Hunter is very much the guy who only wants to do things when absolutely necessary, like taking up a job for the credits. This would bring them unnecessary attention, especially if things go south. However, this episode, when it comes to the Bad Batch's mindset, is very much a question of what benefits them versus what benefits others. Because, interestingly, this is a case where it's the child who is reminding the adults in the group that being a soldier involves doing what's right. Yep. Omega has done this sort of thing plenty of times. It is kind of surprising how you've got Omega. She doesn't know everything, but she literally has to pound into the Bad Batch's head in this case, something that they should know all too well. Well, it's certainly one of those things where you spend literally your entire life being ordered by one entity, and now you're on your own having to make your own choices. You're not told, well, I mean, okay, yeah, they do take up jobs, but I mean, in this, in particular, they have a choice. They actually have to think about the consequences that doing something could bring. So, because of Omega kind of grounding them back to reality, I guess you could say, they choose to return to Ryloth, but after meeting up with Hera, it doesn't take very long before they decide that 
the job is too risky for them when they take an initial look at the Imperial Refinery. And I know that just before they looked at the Imperial Refinery first time round anyway, Hunter did say to Hera, we'll see what we're up against, but no guarantees. They still choose to walk away anyway, which obviously upsets Hera, and again, lights Omega's fuse a bit, and again has to make Hunter realise that outright turning away from this is the wrong thing to do. And she even says Hera just wants her parents back, and that if Omega was in her situation, she would do the same thing for the rest of the Bad Batch. Which then leads to Hera and Omega's conversation, where because of, from Hera's point of view, Hunter's lack of regard, Omega has to reassure her that the guys will make the right decision. And Omega is asked by Hera, how does she trust the rest of the Bad Batch so much? Well, Hunter specifically, to which Omega just says he's her brother. They all are. Yep. So then that leads on to dealing with the facility. If I remember right, Hunter and Echo take out any stormtroopers patrolling the area. It's Wrecker and Tech who were dealing with destroying enemy shuttles, and it was Chopper who was trying to disable the perimeter cannons while being watched over by Omega and Hera. Yeah, a distraction, and because we're dealing with the Empire here, they don't suspect that. Crosshair is the only one who figures it out, because Mm. he knows them. Yeah, and... Before we continue on with talking about Crosshair for just a second, may we rewind back to earlier on when Rampart tried to force Crosshair into supposedly keeping on task with trying to find Hera, even though Crosshair was genuinely in the right to warn Admiral Rampart about what the Bad Batch are capable of? Mm. Like There is definitely a sense of arrogance within uh, the Imperial officials. So yeah, Crosshair realises that the refinery is not the Bad Batch's main target, to which one of the remaining soldiers in his unit asks, why would they be attacking it? And, uh, Henson, do you want to take on the next topic? Clone Captain Hauser? Yeah, so, continuing off from the last episode, we see that Hauser isn't the mindless, obedient trooper like all the other clones. And sure enough, we see it come to its conclusion here, where he helps the group escape. But we get an interesting scene here, with Crosshair and the other troopers who are ready to spring a trap on the Bad Batch and the rescued Twi'leks of Tam's group, where Hauser gives a speech saying how what they're doing is wrong, and some of the troopers side with him. This is yet another question regarding the inhibitor chips that has been raised. Yeah, we don't know how the inhibitor chips work. At some points, it makes the trooper completely obedient and makes them lose their personality. And in other cases, the trooper still retains their personality. But here, though... I would assume the chip just didn't work in these clones, because they still have their personality, and aren't completely obedient. But if Uh. that's the case, that is a lot of clones. Granted, small in the grand scheme of how many clones were made, but still. Uh, But, anyway, back to the point. Hauser is ultimately has to surrender to the Imperial troopers, and um, then we get a moment of Crosshair supposedly looking at Hunter directly eye to eye after the Bad Batch have successfully freed Hera's parents and uh, uncle, as well as Champ's supporters. I guess that moment was just um, to affirm that Crosshair 
knows for definite what they've done, maybe. But it's an interesting little moment, nonetheless. We conclude the Ryloth stuff. The way the episode ends is you have the Bad Batch and the Syndulas uh, giving their farewells. And then right after that, Rampart actually acknowledges his arrogance from earlier on in the episode. He outright says to Crosshair, I underestimated your friends. If only they were fighting for us. And Crosshair just says, request permission to hunt them down. And Rampart just goes, hmm, granted. So the remaining episodes, it seems like it's going to be Crosshair and company versus the Bad Batch, pretty much. So something I do want to mention uh, before we wrap up is Crosshair's expression. Because as weird as it is to see from him, he doesn't seem 100% certain about it. He doesn't have, you know, eyebrows angled down, ready to make the kill sort of look. He's, would you say he's just sort of maybe contemplating in the back of his mind what he's doing? Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me. Do you still think what we know of the chips at this point, which is they work on their own logic? So do you still stand by the possibility of Crosshair reuniting with the Bad Batch and having his chip removed? At this point, yeah. In that case, I think we are done. All right. And with that, we come to the end of yet another podcast. Overall... This was a really good episode, concluding this little arc, and I can't wait to see what the rest of the season brings. Quite frankly, neither can I. I think the remaining four episodes will, to some degree or another, directly focus on what the ending, pretty much, of the first episode was building towards. I think it's just going to be, in a sense, Crosshair versus the Bad Batch for the rest of this. And, well, let's hope for something epic to come over the next few episodes. Indeed. So, with me today has been... Jedi Knight Luke, hope you guys have enjoyed. I'll be signing off. May the Force be with you. And of course, the always fantastic and extravagant Captain Ensign. See you all next time.